In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you what callbacks are. Callbacks are a very important concept when working with JavaScript in general, and as a result, it affects your Node.js development. We will understand how a callback actually works and what exactly happens when you pass a function as a callback. So let's check it out. All right, I'm gonna illustrate callback by creating this JavaScript file called filepi.js. And uh, here I'm going to do, uh, let's say, fs equals require of the file system API. I want to demonstrate how callbacks work by looking at the right API of the file system. All right, if you were to open the API documentation and uh, look at the file system, and if you were to look at write file, you notice here there are two APIs for write file. There is write file and write file sync. What we were using was write file. Actually, if we were to use write file sync, the usage of the API is actually much easier. All right, let me show you what I mean. So fs.writefile sync takes in three parameters, well, technically two mandatory parameters and one optional parameter called options. The two mandatory parameters are file and data. All right, let's do this. Let's say file, say fs dot write file sync. I'm gonna pass in a file saying out dot txt, and then the data can be a string. This should get written to file. Okay. Now this is a little bit easier than the other API that we saw, which needed an argument, which was the callback. Well, why don't we use this all the time? Okay, let's try this out. I'm gonna do a node file api.js. You see there's an out.txt and this is printed to the console. Fine, simple, right? Why do we even care about the other one? Now here is where things are a little different. So let's say I do console dot log, this should print after previous line. Okay, now if I were to run this, this writes to out.txt, okay, this particular line writes to out.txt, and then you have a console log, which runs after the file is written, okay? The key is in this part of this API name called sync. Okay, write file sync basically says that this operation is gonna be performed synchronously. And what does it mean? It means that when the interpreter in encounters this line, it is going to do the job, wait for the job to be done, and only after that, it is going to go to the next statement and execute it. Okay, compare this with something like fs dot write file, which is asynchronous. By default, write file is asynchronous. What we used here was the synchronous version of it, which is what sync indicates. But if I were to use the asynchronous version, things are gonna be a little different. Let me show you. So let's say I do the same thing, out.txt, and then this is, uh, let's say, this is, should be written, and then now I need to pass in a callback. The callback will be, um, I can accept error as an argument. And then let me see console.log. This is printed after the file is written. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and then paste this over here. Now, if I were to execute these statements, not this stuff, if I were to execute these statements, what do you think is the order of printing of these statements? There is one console.log, which is executed after the file is, render, is written, right? So this is written asynchronously. And with the callback, you're basically saying, hey, node interpreter, after you write the file to disk, execute this function. Okay, and then after this whole line of the write file, the code that does the write file, after this, you have written this console log statement. It says this should print after the previous line. 
Now, what's going to be the order? This is where the difference between sync and async shows up. In the previous example, when we used the sync operation, this ran after the file was written to disk. It's hard to tell, but you're going to have to take my word for it. But here is where you can clearly see the difference. What's going to happen here is this line is going to tell the node interpreter, write to file. This is the name of the file, and this is the content that you need to run, write to that file. And after you've written that content to this file, execute this function. It's going to send this instruction to the node runtime. It's going to move on and it's going to send this instruction to the node runtime, print to console some statement. And then what does the node interpreter do? The node interpreter runs this. It says, okay, I'm going to write to file. And after I write to file, I'm going to print to console. Okay. Now here I'm going to print this to console. And then at some point of time, the file is going to be written. And after the file is written, then this function is going to get executed and this console.log is going to be printed. So the order is going to be this line will print, this should be printed after the previous line. And then this line will print this printed after the file is written. Okay. So the order is kind of flipped. You notice here, the console that follows the file write statement executes immediately. Okay. The console log that's in the callback of the file write statement gets executed only after the file is written. All right. This is the difference between sync behavior and async behavior. Sync is provided in this API as a convenience feature, but this is not something that you should actually be using. Why? Because by using the sync API, you're essentially having the node runtime wait in this instruction until the file is written to disk and only after that it is going to run the next instruction if the file write takes a while say two minutes you know it's too much but go with me here if it takes two minutes this line is not executing for those two minutes right it's just waiting as you can see that's a problem in a single threaded model when there is only one thread which is executing this program if one instruction is taking two minutes, that means that the whole program is halted for that two minutes, which is not a good idea. So if your instruction set, let's say you're writing a piece of code where the next line really depends on the file to be written, it might make sense to still have it be sync. But then if you're having your node runtime serve multiple users, well, your file write is basically blocking that node runtime from serving other users. So in, even in that case, you would want to use an async version. The async version is usually detected by this callback operation. Whenever you're passing a callback to an API, that is a clear clue that this is an async API. Now, how do you write async code? So let's say you were to write a function called uh, let's say let logger API. Let's call this your API. Is basically a function that takes a log message and writes it to your log, okay? And this is going to use the file system API. And let's say I do this. Uh, let's actually use sync version, okay? You're using the write file sync to write a log message to disk, okay? So let's say this is out dot log okay this is your log message uh, this is your log file that you're going to be writing all log messages to and then here's your log message so now you have a logger api uh, and this you can call this anytime my logger api and then log this and it is going to log to outer log but this is not what you want, right? This is a synchronous logging. Whenever you log something, this is going to wait for the log to be actually written to file before the next statement here is executed. We don't want to do that. Now, why is there a problem? Because let's say for logging, you don't wait for the log message to be written, right? You're executing some code and you want to write something to your log file. You just write something and move on. This next line doesn't need to wait for that log statement to be complete. Okay, but here in this case, by using sync, it is actually waiting. Now, how do I make it asynchronous? Well, it's very simple. I can just use write file, and this becomes 
asynchronous. So what this is going to do is it's going to write this and let me actually put a, a no op callback over here. This basically does nothing even if there's an error. But just for illustration purposes. Now, if there is a next line here, which is business logic and has no dependency on the logging, well, you're not delaying this next line until the logging is complete by making this asynchronous. Okay, that's great. But now what if you wanted to wait? Okay, after logging something, you want to have maybe update log metrics. Okay, let's say you have a function update log metrics and you want this to update you want this function to be called only after this write file is done now how do you do this well the way you do this is by having your api be asynchronous as well and having that accept a callback okay so that the way that works is let's say i accept this callback over here and then i pass this callback to the callback of write file because you know what write file is going to execute whatever function is passed to it after the file is written so if you have an api that you want to be async you need to accept a callback function as well and you're basically telling the consumer of your api hey user i take a log message as an argument also pass me a callback so that if you want something to execute after the log message is done give it to me in a function and I'll make sure that gets executed after the log is written to file. So in this case, I pass a function as an argument and I put this guy inside that function. So now in this case, update log metrics is not going to run immediately after this is triggered and uh, you know it doesn't care whether it executes or not. This particular thing actually cares for this log to be actually written. So in that case, you pass this inside a function and that function is going to be a callback and that callback is what you pass to the actual asynchronous API, which you're calling from Node.js, okay? So this is how synchronous versus asynchronous works. And I think a couple more file APIs in Node.js have this kind of sync versus async uh, feature. They have both versions of the API provided as a convenience feature, but you should typically be using async. However, these two versions of the API provide a good way for us to understand how uh, async versus async works in uh, JavaScript and how you were to create, uh, if you were to create your own API, which needs to be async, how you would do it. Now, before I wrap up, the final thing I want to highlight is what if you want to update, uh, what if you want to get access to the error? Now, let's say my logger API uh, provides a way for you to handle errors. Now, you log this and then you take a callback, which accepts a function that needs to be executed after this is logged. But now somebody who's calling this API is going to say, hey, hang on a second. Now this might fail. My logger API might fail because it's actually writing to file, in which case I want my callback to actually have the error passed to it. Okay, in that case, you can take the error as an argument over here. And then when you pass this function, well, the way JavaScript works is that argument actually gets passed to your callback but automatically because you're passing in a function. So if this write file errors out, this is going to pass an error object to the function that's passed in. And if your callback, whoever is calling your API has a callback, which takes in an error as an argument, they're gonna get access to whatever this write file passes to this callback, okay? So if this write file passes an error object to this callback, well, that's gonna get passed to this function that's sent to your API. So this error object is going to be that and you can do something with it in your function. Okay. Now that you've understood how callbacks work, let's take that knowledge and apply it to an API which uses callbacks a lot. We're going to learn how to make REST API calls using Node.js. We're going to build a REST API client which is going to make a REST API call to an external server and we're gonna have code which processes the response using this callback model. So check out this next tutorial where I teach you how to make REST API calls using Node.js.